Okay. Alrighty, I'll check car behind me. Whoops. We're at the, so uh, sorry. We're at the landmark. Yeah. Uh, Want to show him the room number? Uh, no, not yet. <laughs> We was uh, going to take the elevator, but we'll take the stairs. Yeah, I like the stairs. All right, go ahead there. We're at the landmark. The reason we're here is for historical significance. We're going to show you a room in a minute that we're getting ready to make famous. Right here, baby. Here's your card. There you go. Now, why are you going to make this room famous? Why are we going to make 224? Yep. The reason why is this room right here is going to be famous is this room. Turn the light on. Sorry. You're all right. Oh. Is that it? <laughs> turn the bathroom light on. <laughs> There's that. Uh, everything but it. There we go. This room, 224, at the Landmark Inn. In Pikeville, Kentucky, out there is the sign, the landmark. Yeah. And uh, she'll here's all kinds of parking right That's outside what of her. I was her. telling you, so we need to go move yeah, the cars. we will. On this side. We will. Sheila, why is this room significant? Because this is where Susan Smith stayed while she was waiting on Mark Putman to meet and so they can talk and have their affair. This is where uh, Ron Poole, Mark Putnam's partner, mm -hmm. FBI agent Ron Poole, brought Susan Smith to on June the 5th. That's when Mark Putnam arrived from Florida right. to come to Pikeville to work on a court case uh, that was going on in Lexington, Kentucky. Right. And Ron Poole went and picked Susan Smith up, who was pregnant by... Mark Putnam, Mark and he checked her into this room, 224 at the Landmark Inn. And she stayed here for three days, waiting on Mark. Now, Mark was in room 126, so Mark would have been somewhere downstairs. Now, they no longer have a room 20, 126. It is now office buildings down there. You can see... You can see them over in that window there, the black window. You can see the reflection back to the guardrail and where the rooms used to be downstairs. And she would watch out this window to see if she could see Mark pulling up from court because she was wanting to hook up with him and see what he had in mind. She thought he was going to leave his wife, yeah. leave his family, and and take care of her that was her dream her hope and that's not what happened now what happened was <clears throat> is that she looked downstairs and she saw mark's car there late that night mm -hmm. and she goes down knocks on his door and he says come in and she comes in and she, he says uh we need to talk what are we going to do? And I hear you're pregnant and so forth like that. He knew she was pregnant because he had done seen the report. Ron Poole, correct? Yep. Ron, Ron, Poole, Ron Poole had already showed him the... Uh, uh, she'd, she'd stopped by the office and showed Ron Poole and gave him a copy of it. Her pregnancy test. Her pregnancy test from the health department. And uh, so they get downstairs here. They get in an argument and they start talking loud according to Mark's statement. And he's afraid the neighbors are going to call the police, so he tells her, let's take a drive. And he takes a drive with her, and they drive over toward Phelps. And uh, we'll show you tomorrow where it happened at, but uh, they stop on a mountain over there to talk. And Mark says he told her, that's okay then. Uh, him and his wife, Kathy, would just adopt the baby. And when he said that... She got upset, and I guess they got into a fight. He said she that smacking she smacked him, him and when she did, he started fighting her back and he choked her. He says that he choked her to death in this statement and report. The autopsy later on starts to say something else, but we'll cover that at another 
different at a different time. These videos, we're trying to do them just in small segments, small videos, just to keep an interest. And uh, for right now, that's going to. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, right there would be our room. That's 224. Mm -hmm. And 126 was right here. So this would have been Mark Putnam's room. Now, they have this turned into a, there are no longer rooms on the bottom. On the bottom is kind of a medical supply or clinic or something. Mm -hmm. it's, they've got an office building on the bottom floor. There's no longer any rooms there. But that would have been Mark's room. And he would have pulled up right in here. So she could have seen him. And when she seen him pull up, she would have, that's when she come down to this room mm -hmm. to, uh, to see him. Um, yeah. And that's when they hooked up and got together. Right. So uh, that would have been 126. And um, there's 224. So this is where, where it all took place. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm going to if this is medical. Now right up here at the Pineville Medical Center, that great old big building up there on the right. Can you see it in your camera, you think? Um, I can barely see the white sign from here. Get right here and see. Right there, Pantwell Medical Center, way up there, lit up. Yeah. Right up there. Let's see if I can get it right yeah, there. Yeah, right on the other side of that big black building, that big hospital, is uh, Dill Cemetery on the other side. That's where Randall McCoy and Sarah McCoy's buried. Just about anywhere you look around here in Pantwell, you can see their cemetery. Mm -hmm. And directly across from there, here's where they're buried. And directly right over there, off that hill, mm -hmm. is the big white house where we just ate at. That's Randall's old home place. Oh, man, that, that was amazing. That is now a restaurant. And, guys, I'm going to tell you something. If you're into the Hatfield and McCoy history, uh, one of the best go. things you can do is go there. Because it is, uh, the food was delicious. And uh, it was just, uh, it's free. I, I, I would, if I was them which we gave them a considerable <laughs> contribution, uh, or at For, least to yeah. the waitress, we tipped her because she was just so nice, the food was good, but the fact that they let us just so view upstairs. Randall McCoy's whole home place. I mean, the bathroom, the upstairs. The wood, uh, yeah. the boards on the walls. Sheila and I, and we've been everywhere over the last 35, 40 years as far as, uh, and the sad thing is, and that's okay because we're still discovering all the places we've been, all the places we've taken people on tours, mm -hmm. and the books and the stories, and uh, we had never been to uh, to that place. And uh, it was interesting, it and sure we'd recommend it to anybody. All right. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. We'll have some more on it later on tonight. Right. Please like and subscribe. Bye. Like and subscribe. Bye.